This is Ray Mossolder with Chapter 6 of Carol and Jimmy Owens' Sussex Cove. Sussex Highlands, Massachusetts, same day, afternoon. Fall down weary. Joanna stood at the door and said goodbye to the horde of politicians and tycoons, most of whom ate and drank too much and tried unsuccessfully to look grieved. The last to leave was Senator Hoffman, who had stayed to comfort her stricken father-in-law and take him home. She had given him her warmest thanks for his kindness. Alone, except for some tiptoeing servants, she went straight to her bedroom. A minutes later, standing in the middle of a closet of hedonistic science, she realized she had no thing for a proper widow to wear. She wanted to put on hot pink peacock green, red flowers. She had worn black all day and she hated it. Although maybe it was appropriate, if only to show regret for what might have been. Suddenly, she was engulfed by a wave of grief for all the sad ruined years and dead dreams. She leaned against the wall then and cried for what could never be changed. After a few moments, she blotted her tears and pulled herself together. Enough. No more sniveling about the past, ever ever. She rifled through the rows of clothes and put on her widow's weed, cotton sweatpants, and a crew neck sweater, gray. Close enough. She walked into the bedroom and as suddenly as if someone had pulled a plug, she was drained of every volt of energy. A long nap would be heaven. Why not? Everything else would wait. She lay down on the bed gingerly like someone old or ill and closed her eyes. Joanna saw Richard the way he was the last time She'd seen him alive. She'd been reading in bed when he walked in, bleary-eyed from too much whiskey. He'd hung onto the tall mahogany bedpost like a cartoon drunk draped around a lamp post. He strained to focus, but he knew what it was talking about. He took up where they had left off hours before. If you want to leave, Joanna, then go. It will be interesting to see you trying to make your way in the big wide world. I give you a week on your own. Joanna put her book down and sighed. Listen, Richard. I can do fine on my own, better on my own. My father and mother left me with plenty of money and brains, so don't even bother to belittle me. Well, maybe so, but if you go, girly, and Harry wagged an admonishing finger, kiss Jimmy goodbye. Because 
Never, never, never are you going to get him away from his family. You'll be in your grave first. Joanna had jumped out of bed. You can't keep him. You can't keep him. Richard loomed over her small frame. He tangled his fingers in her hair and jerked her head up. He kissed her hard, cutting her lip with his teeth, then released her with a shove. She staggered back against the bed. I can't keep him. He laughed, don't be ridiculous. He walked out with careful exaggerated steps and slammed the door. Furious, she'd hurled her book at the door, followed with a vase, and gone on shouting, you can't keep him, you can't. But they were tears streaming down her face in real fear, gripping her inside. She didn't doubt Richard for a minute. She knew very well the Stanfields could, would, hold on to Jimmy, no matter what it took to do it. Her eyes snapped open. She sat straight up in bed, breathing hard. Her adrenaline was up and she was ready for a battle. And she would battle to death for Jimmy. But there was no one left to fight. The telephone beside the bed shrilled and she leaped to her feet in a spasm of nerves. Yes? Her voice was a rough whisper. Oh, Aunt, Aunt Margaret. Yes, dear, I'm all right. Uh, the, the, the phone startled me. She hesitated a moment. Andy, would it be possible for Jimmy to stay with you for a few more days? Oh, thank you. Thank you, darling. I have so much to settle here, and I want to be able to give him a lot of attention when I tell him that Richard has gone away. She hung up and thought about that cloud on the horizon, telling Jimmy about his father. Well, it's true, they'd never been close. Fond, maybe. But Richard, busy with his automobiles and women, had given his son little attention. Charles had made up for that. He adored the boy. Now that Richard was gone, Jimmy would be the focus of Charles' life. Joanna's palms were suddenly damp. Relax, relax, she told herself. Jimmy is happy and safe at the Pines. She smiled, feeling a rush of pure love, thinking of him playing with little boys from the vacation houses. He would be prowling the shore, collecting treasures from the sea to bring home to her. Joanna wished she were seven years old again, playing on the beach with those two boys who had gone away so suddenly. What were their names? One was Sam, wasn't it? Nice boys. They'd played pirates together and danced. Yes, she remembered.